welcome back to Score on Business. And our next guest is FBI Special Agent Scott Augenbaum. And he leads the regional cybersecurity team for the FBI. And thanks for being here. And you know, Scott, this whole cybersecurity thing has become such a big deal for businesses and, and there's a lot of exposure for individuals. And thank you for coming. Well, Pete, thanks so much for having me on. You know, you, a second doesn't go by when we're talking about some kind of cybersecurity incident, if it's at a big company, if it's nationally, if it's someone in the family. And one of the things that we're trying to do right now with the FBI is we're trying to get out to the public as much as possible just to spread the message out there and to be able to provide the public with a number of steps that you guys could take to help prevent yourself and not be the victim of cybercrime. Awesome. Awesome. So you you let's start. You spend more time teaching companies and and individuals how to protect themselves than than actually enforcing what um, you know basically arresting people when when breaches occur why is that well you, you know Pete I've been an FBI agent now for 22 years and when I started in 1995 if you would have asked me what is my job description I'd say it's very very simple to explain there are bad people doing bad things to good people in my geographical area of responsibility and my job was to put bad guys in jail who violated federal laws if you ask me to define my job today I can define it almost in one sentence I teach people how not to be the victim of cybercrime because I can boil down my cybercrime into really three major elements. The first one is when the bad guys get access to your stuff, and think about it, every organization has different stuff. If you're a doctor's office, you have medical records. If you're a lawyer, you have legal records. You have, everyone has stuff, and as homeowners, we have stuff. And the thing that's really upsetting the most is once the bad guys get your stuff and they steal it, when you call law enforcement, the chances of us getting your stuff back is very very challenging and the reason for that is a majority of our subjects our bad guys are located overseas we're dealing with very very sophisticated adversaries that are located over in Eastern Europe Western Africa South America and Asia and it's very very challenging for us to bring these bad guys to justice even though we have FBI agents throughout the world but we are guests of the foreign government and in a lot of these countries, we don't have extradition treaties. They are not very concerned when our citizens are becoming victimized. And the thing that drives me to do what I do for a living is 90% of what I deal with on a regular basis could have been prevented. I don't walk into many situations these days where I go like this, wow that had to happen. So what I wanted to do is talk to you and your yeah. viewers a little bit today about some of the steps that everyone can go out today, bring back to their businesses, bring back to their personal lives, and hopefully not become the victim of a cybercrime incident. Yeah, and, and some of the things you're gonna talk about, it interestingly, it's the same thing that would apply to a big company as would apply to a small company is applies to individual people at yeah. home. It all comes down to the same thing, and it's really the loss of the password. Yeah, tell, that, okay, so tell us about something. That is one of the things that we see. We just had Yahoo lost one billion usernames and passwords. And to me, that was a very, very troubling breach. And why is that? One billion usernames and passwords are in the hands of the bad guys. What's so troubling about that? When my Yahoo password got breached, they said, hey, change your password. We all went out, we changed our password. But the troubling fact is 60 to 70 percent of the population is using the same password for multiple platforms. So let's stop and think about that. The bad guys have a list of usernames and passwords for Yahoo. 60 to 70 percent of the population is using that same password for their Yahoo account as they are their bank account information, as they are for their iPhone, 
as they are for their Amazon account. And now let's take that back and let's say you're a small business owner and let's say you have sensitive information on your business and now the bad guy is able to access that information. And that is why it's so important that we go out and we make sure that we have separate passwords for our mission critical accounts. Because I'm working a lot of investigations and one in particular where the bad guy got into someone's Facebook account and the person used the same password for Facebook as they used for their email account. Now the bad guy took that password, logged into the email account, and then what did they see? All the bank account information. And then they were able to log into the bank account. Then they took that information and they went to www.icloud.com and use that same password yeah. and then were able to access where the family members were they had all of their stuff for their business backed up into the i you know the the cloud and the bad guy locked everything out and then they demanded money the individuals would not pay it and the bad guy just deleted everything and moved on and took all yeah. their money Okay, hey, we're going to take a quick break and we'll get right back and talk some more. Sounds great. Yeah.